the toughest thing about making a course is you can go through the entire process uh, of making a course, which we're going to give you a framework on how to do that in 10 days. Yep. Um, most mm. people, when they want to make a product, and we've seen this so many times, they start an ebook and it goes for months and months and months as they're dialing this thing down. They finally get this thing put wrapped together in a product. Then they're upper limiting and terrified. They finally slip it out, but don't really do much hard marketing and it just flops hard. Um, so it's really frustrating when you go through all of the work and create a product and then it dies. And one of the reasons it's gonna die is because you just didn't give them what they actually want. We've made the mistake, we've learned from it. And so this lesson's super important because if you miss this lesson, but you do everything else right, it won't matter. A big part of creating the right course is how you present the information both in the course itself as well as in the marketing. Um, and so making a course about pretty much any topic can be successful. Mm -hmm. And so, But what we need to understand is what are the pain points? What are the needs of our customer? And one of the easiest ways to do that is to survey them. Now, if you survey your customer and say, what do you think you would want? What kind of course would you want? Mm -hmm. Would you like mm -hmm. it in video? Mm -hmm. Would you like it in audio? Mm -hmm. What information do you want in the course? They have no idea. None. They have no idea what they need. They think they do. They don't. <laughs> They're wrong. <laughs> Nobody asked us. No one asked us to make a WordPress theme. Yeah. But when we made a WordPress theme, it was extremely successful. Yeah. The customers didn't realize that's what they needed. They said, we hate WordPress. It's so hard to use. We saw an answer was a theme that could just organize it for yeah. you. Word, uh, designing in WordPress is hard. Site speed is an issue. Mm -hmm. There were a few things, a few separate problems, and we thought we can fix all those mm -hmm. with one product. Mm -hmm. One product. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you talked about surveying the audience. I yeah. think that's really, really important that you're focusing on getting to know the customer, not yes. asking them what to do. So, a specific example of that that I paid a big cost for um, when I was running uh, my photography site. Um, I heard people over and over ask for a course on the business of photography, you know, selling photos, becoming a wedding photographer. And I worked and spun my wheels and got this course ready. And I made a bunch of like uh, templates for your pricing page and all kinds of stuff. And I put it out there. I sold dose. <laughs> That's two. That's a I sold two um, of this product. And the others I'd sold sold hundreds of yeah. and I said how is that possible and I went back specifically to the places that I had asked um, my audience mostly on Facebook at the time and it actually wasn't a hundred people asking for this product it was a few who were really into it and wrote big messages and were excited about it and yeah. told me all the different things they wanted in it and I realized oh it was a little major little minority that I was listening to it was really loud. Yes. And the people who, um, you know, I just, I didn't understand my audience. So right now we use YouTube polls a lot. A ton. Um, and the reason we do, so we're making a, a post on YouTube and you can do the same thing if you're a blogger. Um, just go find a plugin that it will pop up a little survey for people. One question um, and just change it every week and get to know that audience. You know, if this is cooking, um, make a survey that says, uh, on average, how many calories is your lunch? It's not, this isn't, yeah. I, this isn't product research. I just want to understand you. Right. Are you the person that eats tofu and kale every lunch? Or are you the person that makes slap of joes, you know? <laughs> I want to know who you are. Yeah. You know, how many people do you cook for each night? Um, you know, uh, are you single or are you married? Just all kinds of questions until you can really start to understand who it is that I'm making a product for and then you decide what they need. So if you ask the question, what course do you want? And you get three people saying over and over again in long posts, I want a course on, biz on the business aspects of photography, but you've also been doing a survey and, and you've asked questions like, do you do photography as a business mm -hmm. or as a hobby? And you find out that most of your audience are hobbyist photographers. 
you know, just getting to know them through those single one question, those little one question surveys that again, you change all the time so that you regularly get answers to new questions. Man, you're just going to learn so much more about what your, who your audience is and what they really need. So that's a very important piece of advice is ignore and try to avoid and get around that noisy minority who are going to shout in your ear all the time. We have people who will comment on every YouTube video asking for us to create something specific or make a video about something specific. Mm -hmm. And the few times that I've given into that, it's usually a video that totally flops mm -hmm. because it's someone was loud and they had a question. And so you just have to learn how to silence that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, when you really understand your customers, you're able to understand something about the solution that they don't. So we're gonna talk about some specific examples yeah. of that, but first let's talk about just selecting your course topic kind of in general. Now, the first thing I want you to kind of at least have a vision for is where are the info product offerings in your company headed in the future? Is a membership site with multiple different courses in your future? If it is, then let's not make a little mini course now that's the whole pie and yeah. trying to summarize it. Because then when we go to make a more expansive offering, we say, ah, none of this is quite comprehensive enough. And so I just need to start from scratch. Yeah. Instead, take one aspect of the thing and nail it. Sell that as a standalone product. Then you may make another standalone product in a few months and another one and eventually you wrap it all together and start selling it as a subscription. A great example of this might be if you had an interior design website or YouTube channel and you know a course that you might think to make is like learn how to make your house feel like a home. Well that feels pretty big. It mm -hmm. feels pretty broad and also I don't, I don't know what that means because home to you might seem very different from what home to me feels like. And so maybe that's kind of the overall theme that you help people sort of identify what home feels like to them and all. Maybe that's something that would be great as a membership with a lot of different courses down the road. But for right now, it might be fantastic to make a course on how to select a great paint palette for the interior of your house. I think this is just a I love fantastic that. opportunity. I love it. I love it because, you know, maybe you're looking at a bunch of you, you're dialed with your audience. You know, these people, mm -hmm. you know, you ask them to submit photos of their living room every Thursday. And like the one thing mm. that stuck to you is you need to paint the house. <laughs> like your decorations and design is great, but it just yeah. looks dated because of your paint colors. Uh -huh. And so it's something that you come up with for them. Um, that they may not even understand. Or another reason you may want to do that is if you say, you know, I have 75 posts or I have 75 videos on my YouTube channel, but like 30 of them, I found this great little niche with selecting paint colors. Yeah. And if I have a product on that, yes, it's true that it won't apply to everyone that comes to my site, but to the 40% of the content who does come, they're going to love this. And that's okay. It's okay yeah. not to hit everyone in the audience. And you might look at that and say, how can I make a whole course on selecting paint colors? Oh, yes, but you can. But realistically, as you dive into the, the specifics and the nuances of that, I mean, what what does the landscape outside look like and the light coming in? Bringing if a bunch of have, green in. Yeah, if you got a bunch of green shining in because you got a lot of greenery outside, it's going to impact the color scheme of your house. What's your furniture like? You don't want to have to replace all your furniture when you paint your house. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are dozens of different kind of subtopics that are applicable when picking good paint colors. Mm -hmm. And so don't sell yourself short. Don't look at something too high level and say, um, that's probably too specific to make a course on. It's probably not. Um, and so, you know, again, think high level of where your site's going in terms of info products and then select... Instead of a summary of the whole thing, select a piece of it because you may be able to reuse that existing course, that existing content later inside your membership site. Now, one thing we've taught many times, and I think uh, some people, I think a lot of people understood what we were saying and some people maybe didn't quite get the point that we were hoping to get across, um, is we've made the point many times, don't sell fundamentals. Yeah. You don't want to sell 101 of anything. That feels like YouTube content. And now what we mean by that is the presentation, the marketing of your course needs to focus on secret sauce and stuff. We're going to talk about that later, um, how to do that. But as you're choosing a topic, for example, um, if I'm getting into interior design, uh, an interior design 101 content 
perfectly fine. Yeah. You know, if I'm taking uh, water, uh, watercolor painting, just the basics of watercolor painting, that's a perfectly fine topic for your website. All we're going to talk about later is don't present it is, yeah, I'm just going to show you the very basics. Yeah. That's not what they want to buy. And get them beyond just the fundamentals. I have taken fundamentals in graphic design type classes and you get to the end of the class and you've never actually used a piece of software mm -hmm. and designed anything before. Mm -hmm. And so people are kind of used to that. And so when you pitch something as this is the fundamentals, what they hear is, oh, I'm not actually going to learn how to do anything. Yes. Just do the theory before you begin. <laughs> right. So it's okay to teach somebody in the starting place. Our course promise is hopefully going to shoot a little higher than that. You know, compete in local tournaments. You know, yeah. even if somebody's just beginning, um, because they don't want to hear, you're going to be competent in basic disc golf, right? But that's again the marketing. It's okay to teach the fundamentals of something here where we're talking about just the content of what you want to cover. Okay, so now we, we kind of need to get into how we make this better. Customers don't pay for basics. Mm -hmm. They don't. Um, they pay for secret sauce. They pay for ninja tips. Mm -hmm. They pay for that stuff that's going to take them um, a step beyond and, and the stuff that they don't feel like they're going to find in a Google search or just on YouTube. Can I give you a specific example of this yes. that's ironic with the title secret sauce that we uh, always use? So <laughs> I made a bucket list of things, of 50 things to do in life when I was a teenager, 15 years old, and I'm still working on it. After this weekend, I will have 16 left because I'm going to I'm going to compete in a barbecue competition. So I, I'm not good at barbecue, but it was on my list of things to do. And so I'm going to do it. And so I looked down and like, all right, how do I make competition ribs, right? Started watching YouTube videos, get on this guy's channel. I'm like, he's my guy. I want to learn from this guy, right? So he's got a course on barbecue. He also has on YouTube just his recipe where you can just watch him cook his competition ribs and he sells his exact spices. Which one do you think I bought? The course or his exact spices? <laughs> his I exact bought spi the spices. Yeah, exactly. It's literally the secret sauce because... <laughs> I, it's not because I don't think I would learn a lot from the course. I'm sure I would, but I also kind of feel like I can learn how to basically barbecue on YouTube, but then he's got some secret stuff in those packets that makes yeah. him win competitions and I want it. Yeah. Now that's a literal example, obviously, um, but let's take one that's more um, common to what you guys may have. So if you're doing a course on parenting, I don't want to hear, um, you know, how to have happy kids. Yeah, okay. Good, but show me, that's a good topic. It's a fine topic, yeah, absolutely. but that doesn't sell. I, what I want if I'm buying that course is like this older grandma who's like, I can make any kid sleep. I raised eight kids, all of them slept on the floor, and never once did those kids, when I put kids to bed, they stay in bed, and they don't come out, and I'm never up till midnight. Um, that's like, okay, grandma, please, please teach me your secret. That's what we need to do. It's secret sauce. Exactly. Um, something like audio mixing, right? Um, you get, I mean, you can have the, the, you know, oh, I'm going to teach you how to use all the different software and learn how to, and you know, just make your sound sound good and stuff. Or you can have the, the guy that says, um, in my podcast, people comment all the time about how nice and warm my audio sounds, my voice sounds. And I am going to give you a download of the settings that you can go upload right up into Audacity and you can have the exact sweetening settings that I use to get this type of sound. Thanks for that the course. I might watch sauce. it someday. I you want know? that file. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think really goes to the next point is if there's ever a way that you can just solve someone's problem rather than teaching them how to solve it themselves, mm -hmm. that is a great thing to include in your course because that thing alone might sell them. The secret sauce mm -hmm. that you can buy from the guy solves your problem. All you have to do now is not burn the ribs, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Which we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a given. In this case, again, it's like you can teach me all how all the settings work. And honestly, I'd like to know more about that. But if you can give me the settings so that next week my podcast sounds better, Mm -hmm. I will take those settings. Yes, please. Here's my money. Let's say I'm teaching college acceptance. Um, you know, I'm going to help you with your essay. I'm going to teach you how to do better on standardized tests. 
fine. That's a great course topic and you should cover that stuff. But the secret sauce that we want to dangle in front of them is, you know, I have one essay prompt that I've given to the students in my course. 87% or 87 of those students got into Ivy League colleges writing this one essay prompt. Yeah. It's gold. Or yes, like let's buy that to thing. a baseball player. I know how much you love baseball. Mm, <laughs> my favorite. This one elbow workout, this one elbow exercise will increase, or, you know, I use this one elbow exercise to increase my throwing speed by 10 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, cool. I want, I need to know that workout. I need yeah, to know exactly how that works. Yeah. I, you can picture that in marketing, marketing materials where you're watching videos of, of people pitching and you're just like, ah, you just did this elbow exercise. If you tuck it in, look what he can do. And I'm going to teach you the drills to do this. Yep. Anyway, uh, so cool. So photography, um, in photography, I was going to teach a course on composition. I knew it was going to be a big one. It impacts every kind of, every different style of photography. So I thought it'd be a really good seller. Um, and in, in composition, everybody teaches the same stuff. The rule of thirds. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, yeah, we should probably cover that. But if I tell, tell you in this course that I'm going to teach you the rule of thirds, snores from the audience. Yeah. And so I, I went through my outline and I tried to pick apart, like, what do I say about composition that no other teacher is saying? And it was something that I ended up calling block method composition. And it was just a different way to think about putting different th elements together in your photo to have it make sense to the mind. Um, and by giving it that name, block method composition, and talking about just this one thing as I marketed the course, yeah, I also covered the rule of thirds in there. Uh, but having that thing that people are watching and like, huh, I, I never hear anything new in composition. And this is something that I can, a system I can use to put together those elements and make it feel good. Block method composition sold because of it. Secret sauce, my Secret friends. sauce. It's very good. And now that we know, or at least we know how to find out what our customers are probably going to want, mm -hmm. it's time to start just getting that down in writing. Um, use your worksheet. Work through this process. Go pull your audience and figure out what's going to be the right content to give them in your course. Exactly, because I think everyone hearing this is saying, oh, I don't, I don't have oh, that. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Continue through this, keep secret sauce in your head, but keep going through the process of outlining your course. And then go sit down with your spouse and just start teaching it to it. And any time you say, you just have, ah, here's my thought on how we approach this. It's a little bit different than any other teacher that you've heard from. There it is. Now we just need to get a good name behind it <laughs> and make it exciting for the audience.